Good morning, Lord's Church. Y'all have been having a grand time talking this morning. On this Halloween morning, I just want you to know there are no tricks here. But we do have the treat of fellowshipping together and worshiping our Lord together. And we could not ask for a better treat than that. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? I know we have some friends who've come home from those frozen places up north. Please raise your hand and let us know you're back home with us again. We are so, so glad to have you home. We've missed you, missed you, and so glad you're here with us. Uh, Virginia has an announcement for us. Virginia, where are you? Good morning. Uh, why uh, I'm here today is um, I am recruiting folks to do call to worship. Laura graciously uh, has done it over the summer, and she's asked me to continue doing it through the winter months. That would be from now through at least May. And I just wanted to make this announcement because so often I hear people kind of looking me, I see people kind of looking the other way when I come with a clipboard or when I come with a calendar. And some of you may not, uh, that are new or haven't been here for a while, may be unfamiliar with our call to worship procedure. Um, this is how it goes. It sounds real complicated, but it's real simple. Pastor Moo determines the call to worship for the whole month. And that call to worship is used for the whole month. And then <clears throat> she has to do this early on because I have to then send those folks that are doing call to worship to Donna so that Donna can do the bulletin. This happens long before your chosen Sunday. So the reason I'm here is I would like you to come to me and say, Virginia, I'd, I'd like to do call to worship because I'm so afraid of missing someone that really would like to do it, and I didn't discover that until too late. So my plea is, please come and say, I'd like to do call to worship. Now, the call to worship, you're given the call to worship. You're given the call to worship. And then after the call to worship, <clears throat> there is a prayer. And uh, we can help you with the prayer, or in most cases, most people, just say what's in their heart, or you can find call to worship prayers. Call to worship is a privilege. It is a privilege and an honor. And I want each of you to experience that privilege. Thank you. Hope to see you after service. After church, Jerry Baum and Donna Moses, raise your hands, please, so everyone knows who you are. Jerry, get that hand up there. <clears throat> They're going to have tickets for the Heroes and Hallelujahs barbecue. There is no cost for these tickets, but you must have a ticket. And there are only 150 of these choice tickets. So please make sure you are getting first choice. Tomorrow, they will be available at both clubhouses during coffee. So make sure today you see either Donna or Jerry. And Jerry's already whining that he's given away so many that he won't have enough for hidden. So maybe go see Donna first. She'll be friendlier to you. <laughs> OK? Uh, and let your friends know if uh, they want to come to this. This is honoring our veterans and will be a good time of fellowship that evening. It will be November the 11th, Thursday, November the 11th, which is Veterans Day. 5 o'clock p.m. here in the clubhouse. Did we have any cards this week, Jeannie? Any cards this week? No cards this week. That's good. Remember, if you would like prayer at the end of the service, please come forward. The pastors would love to have the opportunity to pray with you. Now, would you please pray with me as we begin our service? 
Father, thank you for this time to come before you, to lift our praises to you, to recognize that we are not here for what we can get. We are here to worship you. We are here to honor you. We are here to glorify you. Open our hearts and our minds that we can do so with joyful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. used to this yet. Uh, I'm here to do the call of worship today from Psalm 146 verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God along with all my Do not put your trust in princes, immortal men who cannot save. Blessed is he whose help is, is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord his God. Please join me in a little prayer. Holy Lord, everything we need is found in you. For those of us who come here feeling broken, bring restoration. For those of us who come here feeling weak, bring strength. For those of us who come here weeping, bring joy. For those of us who come here with doubts, bring faith. For those of us who come here feeling shame, bring freedom. For those of us who come here feeling burdened, bring rest. For those of us who come here feeling anxious, bring peace. We ask that the Holy Spirit be with us as today as we begin our service. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. We have come into his house this morning, where two or three come together in my name. There I am with them, Matthew 18, 20. As we can stand together, if you're able, please. We have come into his house. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him Oh, 
gather back ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name to worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Oh, worship him, Jesus Christ our Please be seated. I don't know about you, but too close to you. But sometimes God takes a song in my heart. Uh, I know for a long time I thought, ah, this is a song. It's not a big thing. But I've learned over time that it's God that does it. Uh, a song will, uh, I'll just start singing something. I, I have this happen just off and on. Now I'm not particularly.
This is a time in our worship service where we bring our prayer concerns to our Lord and our joys. Let's not forget the joys. We're delighted everybody's here this morning and we'll have a time during the prayer time for you to lift up names of those that you want to pray for. So let's go to our Lord now. Almighty God, we just come here to praise you. We come here to worship you. And sometimes, Father, we get in the way of what we're really here for. We want to thank you, thank you, thank you for the many blessings you've given us. For the gift of salvation through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. For the gift of forgiveness. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful gift that is. No matter what we have done in our lives, we are forgiven when we repent and turn and go a different way. And then, Father, in our humanness, we sin again. And we know that we can always come to you and seek your forgiveness. You are an awesome Father. You are an awesome Creator. We pray that you send your um, Holy Spirit to us this morning to open our hearts and minds to receive your words on this day. We pray that you be with our soloist and our praise team and our and Pastor Patty and Angie and anyone has anything to do with expressing your words for us on this day. Father, there are many needs within our community and within our family. So we lift these names to you now. Steve. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. You know our needs even before we express them. You know the needs of our loved ones. Just hear our prayers. You have promised to be with us in times of strife, in times of pain, in times of fright. And we ask that you do that now. We claim that promise for each and every one here today. We ask too, Father, that you be with the Lord's church and the leadership here and our churches everywhere, that they are truly preaching your word and seeking to care for your people. And Father, we pray for the leadership of this community, our HOA boards, for the leadership of communities everywhere, for the leadership uh, in our government, here in Winter Haven, here in Florida, here in the United States, in the total world. We ask for your divine intervention. Where we have been so wrong, turn and make us right. Forgive us for the times we have failed you. Inspire us, empower us to be your people here on earth. And we pray that wonderful prayer that your son has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. On impotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place please stand together if you're able to please as we sing together savior like a shepherd lead us mm -hmm. 
Savior, like a shepherd lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use the fold repair. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us time we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast brought us thine we are. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we were. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early it us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Early let us turn to thee. Amen. All, pe all God's people said, Amen. I panicked. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonder this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're Laid behind the stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones above all one the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures this earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified, laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground 
about those words. Let us pray. Father, what a joy it is to worship you. And now we ask that you would continue this worship. Speak your words to your people. Let them be the words we need to hear today. And let us be better for it as we leave because we've been in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I was tempted to speak to you today about Halloween. There's all kinds of fascinating facts about Halloween, All Hallows' Eve. Uh, and it was originated by the Celts in Ireland. They had some very interesting celebrations. One of those for your, your trivia is that they did not carve pumpkins. They carve turnips. Think about how hard that might be to do. However, instead of filling our minds with pagan celebrations, we're going to focus on God's word as Moses spoke it to the people in Deuteronomy. The title of my message is Written on the Heart. The word Deuteronomy in the Hebrew language means the words and is taken from Deuteronomy 1.1, which states, these are the words of Moses, which he spoke to all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness. The Greek translation is to law, meaning that the De Deuteronomy is not a new law, but restating of the law as given to Moses in the book of Exodus. We must remember that Moses knows he will not be entering the promised land. These are his last words to God's people. He knows the people have been rebellious during their 40 years wandering in the wilderness, and he doesn't want them to fail when they finally enter the promised land. He urges the people to remember all that God has done for them and what he has commanded them to do. He wants them to understand the benefits of being God's people. Our scripture today includes the Shema, regarded by many as the most important prayer in Judaism. Jews and many Christians have a mezuzah, very much like this, on their doorpost. Within that mezuzah is the scroll which contains the words of the Shema. Very, very important in the Jewish faith. And as we find, as we go further, how important it is to us. The word Shema in the Hebrew language means hearing and obeying. It reminds the people of the key principle of their faith. There is only one God, and they are to love that God. Devout Jews continue to wear scrolls with the word of the Shema strapped to the upper arm and on their forehead. That way they take God with them wherever they are. 
and are constantly reminded of his love and the obedience required of them. The purpose of this was to remind them that God's word must enter both the head and the heart. Listen to Moses' words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And the words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may go well with you. Moses begins by saying, hear, O Israel, or listen up. The word listen is used over 100 times in the book of Deuteronomy. What he's saying is, what I'm about to say to you is very important, so pay attention. He reminds them there is only one God. Then he gives the greatest commandment. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. He tells them to wear these words on their heart, on their bodies, to teach them diligently to their children, to talk about them throughout the day. He reminds them God will be watching and will reward their faithfulness. But what does that mean for us today here in Winter Haven? To follow the commands spoken by some old dude thousands of years ago. We're not Jewish. We don't wear scrolls between our eyes and on our arms. We aren't under the law. We are under the grace because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So why are these words important for us to understand? Thousands of years after Moses spoke these words, someone else repeated them. That person was Jesus Christ. Remember, the Jewish leaders were always trying to trap Jesus. They were always testing him and trying to discredit him. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus spoke the words of Moses, which would have been very familiar to those re religious leaders. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your minds, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Moses and Jesus both telling us how we are to love God, and Jesus adding how we are to love our neighbors. How can we love that completely with that much devotion? How can we take God with us throughout our day? Do we want to take him to some of the places we go? Do we want him to observe our actions and behavior? To listen to our words? How can we possibly focus on him with all the distractions around us. Is there a way to shut out all that noise? Moses gives us the clue. He told us to listen. Be quiet and wait for the Holy Spirit's whisper in the early morning hours. Listen for God to speak through his word. Moses told us to write these commandments on our heart, that place that sustains life. That is a powerful reminder that hearing the scriptures with our ear is one thing, but hearing God's word with our hearts, receiving it in our hearts, is something altogether different and profoundly more important. Not only did Moses urge the people of Israel to hear and obey God's law, he commanded them to teach the children. What a privilege it is here for us 
the Lord's church to follow his commandment to teach the children as we minister to this child in our fellowship. Moses told the people to demonstrate their devotion to the one God in everything they did. From morning to night, they were never to forget. I believe that's why Jesus said this is the greatest commandment. We need to remind ourselves of it every day, from morning to night. God's truth must not only be learned and applied to our daily lives, it must be written on our heart, echoed by every heartbeat. The word of God is intended to change us. But it can't change us unless it gets into our hearts and flows through our bodies. We are expected to share his word with others. The psalmist writes these words, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. We all know the opportunity to sin is all around us. That evil one with the horns knows our weaknesses and how to draw us into sin. Having God's word embedded in our hearts is the best protection against sin and temptation. But we can't hide his word in our hearts if we don't know his word. That's the importance of Bible study and prayer and having a daily devotion, beginning our day with God. Then we get God's word in our heart. Then it begins working on us and through us then to others. Moses said we are to talk about God wherever we are. Do you think that means that we should talk about God when we're at bingo, in the pool, with our family members, with strangers in a restaurant? Is that possibly what they meant? This is what Paul, Moses wrote. He reminded the people that God's commandment was based on his love for us. Our obedience is based on our love for him. Paul reinforces what our response should be. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Would we be different if we carried the words of the Shema with us every day? If we spoke them and taught them to others? Would our attitude and our treatment of others be different if we began each day saying these words? Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, you are my God. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul with all my mind, with all my strength, and I will try to love my neighbor as myself. Would you repeat those words with me, please? Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, you are my God. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength, and I will try to love my neighbor as myself. What would happen if we were to say these words every day this week until they are written on our hearts, until we know them by heart? Would we be more faithful? Would we treat others differently? Let us pray. Father, you are our God, the only God, and we want to love you with the totality of our beings. But we find it hard to do it by ourselves. So we pray for your power to move through us. Speak your words to us through your word. Whisper them through your Holy Spirit. Embolden us to share your good news with others and to treat others and love them as we love ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Barbara, please come and share with us again.
this month. Oh. <laughs> Not my day. The Lord's day. Okay, we've got to follow that, you folks. Please stand for our last hymn together. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, Isaiah 40, 11. Gentle shepherd. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you, help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us. 
for we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us find another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us for we need you to help us find our way. Please remain standing as we finish the service. Turn something on. And now may the grace of the one and only God, the Son he sent to save us, and the Holy Spirit which indwells us be with you each every day and may you learn to say the words of the Shema each day as you promised to obey your God. Amen. And I need to remind you it's in the bulletin. Thank you Donna for putting it in. Next Saturday night set your clocks back. You get one more hour to sleep next Saturday night, so we should all come in here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on Sunday morning. Also, the bulletin says that Heroes and Hallelujahs is on Friday. It is on Thursday, November the 11th. Your ticket will show that. Remember to see uh, Donna or Jerry for tickets. Oh, and tomorrow morning, tomorrow all day long, is the birthday of a very special lady. Angie's birthday is tomorrow. Roy. Please join hands together. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He loves us all. Us all. He does. He loves us all. He does. He loves us all. He's so good to me. And all God's people who are gathered together in this wonderful church, the Lord's church, said, Amen. Amen.